Welcome to lecture number 62 of the series Unreal 5 for Arquis and in this lecture we'll learn how we can render a scene in Unreal Engine. So let's get started. By the way if you didn't see the last lecture I'll recommend you to see that because in that lecture you learn how we can set up your camera and create these animations. Okay. So let's say if you want to render your scene in Unreal Engine's movie render queue what you need to do is you need to come in here and make sure that movie render queue is selected. You can also select movie scene capture. But I'll select movie render queue because it gives some additional settings that we can use to create very realistic renders. Okay. So I'll select movie render queue and I'll click here. It will pop up a new window. Select here and now we'll have some render settings. First in here we have file format. This is the format of the file in which you want to render your frames. Right now it is set to JPEG. But let's say if you want to render your frames in PNG, then what you can do is you can simply disable JPEG or you can also delete it click here and add PNG sequence. Okay. If you want to render your frames in EXR, you can also do that. You can select EXR, change your compression method to TWAB and make sure multi layer is selected. Okay. And don't forget to disable PNG and the rest of the procedure is pretty much the same. You'll just have to import your EXR sequence in Adobe Premiere or you can also import an EXR sequence in After Effects and render it from there. Okay. For now I'm just going to render in PNG. So I'll enable PNG and delete the EXR sequence. Okay. Next in here we have deferred rendering. We're going to keep these settings as it is but in case if you're rendering in path tracing then in that case you need to disable it. For now we're going to render in lumen so I'll just keep it as it is. But in the next video I'll show you how you can render your scene in path tracing. Okay. Next in here we have output settings. Here we can select the directory where we want to save our frames. Let's select a folder. And here you can change the name of the file. I'm just going to keep it as it is. Next in here we have output resolution. Here you can set the resolution in which you want to render your frames. Let's say if you want to render your scene in 4K, then in that case you can input the X and Y value of 4K resolution. Okay. Next in here we have output frame rate. Let's say if I want to render my animation in 30 FPS, so I'll simply select 30 FPS. Next in here we have custom start frame and custom end frame. Here you can set the duration of your animation. My animation will start at zero and it will end at 240 frames. Okay. Yeah. One more important thing that we need to do is we need to add anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing will actually allow us to set the number of samples at which we want to render our animation. Here we have the spatial sample count and here we have the temporal sample count. These two numbers actually multiply with each other for the number of samples on which the render will take place. Okay. Normally four spatial samples and four temporal samples is a good starting point and will work for your renders most of the time. But in case if you see some flickering in your animation, then in that particular case, you can increase the temporal sample count. Okay. You can increase this to let's say eight. If that doesn't work, you can increase this to 16. Just make sure you don't overkill this because this can significantly affect your render times. Try to keep this number somewhere around four to 64, depending on the scene. But as a starting point, try to choose four number of temporal samples. But in case if you see some flickering in your scene, then in that case, you can increase this number. Okay. And don't forget to check override anti-aliasing and that is pretty much it. I'll click accept and I'll press render. It may take some time to recompile the shaders, but straight away we can see something weird and that is in our render preview, we can see our interactive walkthrough menu. This is because when we click the render button, it actually played this level to render the scene. And because of that, we see this interactive walkthrough menu. So to solve this problem, I'll press escape on my keyboard to stop this render, but I think I won't be able to stop it unless it compiles the shaders. So I'll have to wait. Okay. Let's stop this render and I'll go into the content browser and I'll select the interactive walkthrough folder. I'll go into blueprints and I'll open this interactive walkthrough blueprint. And now what I'll do is I'll disconnect these two nodes and I'll disconnect this one as well and compile this blueprint. Okay. And now we'll no longer see the interactive walkthrough menu in our renders. Let's close this blueprint. And one more thing that we need to do is that I'm going to decrease the camera speed and I'm going to select these fruits. Okay. I'll go into the details panel and I'll disable physics so that they don't move anywhere in my animation. Okay. Let's go back into the level sequence folder and 
I'll click render let's open the settings and I'm gonna delete this JPEG sequence I'm not sure if this is a bug but sometimes when you open the render settings the JPEG sequence appears again so I'll delete it okay I'll accept everything and I'll press render it will take some time to evaluate and as you can see that our animation is now rendering okay I already have these frames rendered so I'll simply press escape on my keyboard to stop this rendering and let's now open Adobe Premiere to import that PNG sequence okay so here I have opened the Adobe Premiere software you can also use After Effects or any other software the procedure is pretty much the same okay so let's import those frames I'm gonna select the first one and make sure this image sequence is checked okay I'll click open and it will import all the frames let's drag it and drop it in the timeline and now if I'll play this animation you can see that we have a very nice animation in here okay I'll simply press ctrl M on my keyboard to render this animation let's rename this animation and I'll export it and here you can see this final animation okay let's go back in Unreal Engine I'll go into the content browser and let's add another level sequence I'm gonna rename this as 5 and let me increase the camera speed and let's bring the camera and place it somewhere around here to render the fluid simulation I'll click this burger menu and add a camera let's pilot this camera okay I'm gonna increase the focal length to let's say 25 and disable and disable focus I'll place it somewhere around here let's add an actor I'm gonna move this on x-axis and place it here let's move this on y and place it somewhere around here okay I'll select this camera and I'll drag this camera and place it inside this actor okay and now what I'll do is I'll open this level sequence I'm gonna select these two drag and drop them in here I'm gonna select this actor and add a transform parameter let's animate the rotation I'll add a keyframe and at frame number let's say let's increase the frame range to 500 I'm gonna move to frame number let's say 470 and add a rotation animation okay and don't forget to increase the range of this track okay let's play this animation I'm gonna pause it and I'm gonna select these two keyframes and change the keyframe interpolation to linear okay yeah I think this is okay I'll click render I'll delete this level sequence let's open the settings I'll delete the JPEG sequence and I'll add PNG sequence 
and let's add anti-aliasing I'm gonna set the spatial sample count to 4 and temporal sample count to 16 there might be some flickering in the grass so that is why I'm choosing 16 temporal samples okay I'll go into the output settings I'm gonna set the end frame to 470 and I want to render this animation at 30 fps let's select a folder and I'll click on accept I'll click render and it will start rendering our animation okay I already have this animation rendered so I'll simply press escape on my keyboard let's open Adobe Premiere let's import those frames I'll drag it and drop it in here and let's click play you may see some noise and flickering in the grass I'm not quite sure why this is happening but it is only limited to Adobe Premiere because when I'll export this animation and as you can see that we don't have any sort of flickering or noise in the grass okay let's go back in Unreal Engine so in the same way you can also render your water faucet simulation but you have to do one thing okay you need to go into interactive walkthrough folder open the blueprints folder open this bathroom faucet simulation blueprint select this one and make sure that this running option is checked okay if somehow unreal engine crashes when you start your renders then it probably means that your gpu doesn't have enough vram to render your scene to solve this problem you can do some adjustments First of all, you need to make sure that you don't have any application running in the background. If it still crashes in your renders, then try to render your scene in lower resolution, okay? One more thing that you can do is, you can optimize your scene for rendering, maybe add less trees or foliage because they can significantly affect performance. You can also use low resolution textures and hopefully this will solve your problem. Another possible solution of this crashing may be path tracing. If you're experiencing crashing problems with Lumen, try to render your scene in path tracing and see if that works. I'm not quite sure about this one but it may work okay so yes that's it for this lecture and in the next lecture I'll show you how you can render your scene in path tracing so yes I'll see you guys in the next one